Hey everyone, I'm Jesse McCollum, brand ambassador for Everlast Welders. Today we're gonna to talk about some common aluminum fit-up issues and how to work around them. Okay, here we have two outside corner joints. Normally we're shooting for a good inside to inside fit up like we have on this one. It's a standard outside corner. You guys have probably seen a thousand of them on Instagram. Today, we're gonna to show you how to weld up more of a poor fit up where you have one plate kind of above the other. You see this a lot if maybe a, a bin was made a little bit off and the plates aren't quite lining up. So typically on this fit up, I see people make one of two mistakes. Either they run it as a fillet weld and they keep all the weld underneath the top overlapping plate, which is a very cold weld, or they try to catch that top edge and it leaves a lot of sharp peaks. So if you're seeing these results for this fit up, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Now on this first run, we're not trying to catch all of this top plate. We're trying to make a, keep a nice, even edge of the plate there. So we're not trying to catch that edge. So what we're gonna do is run this kind of like a fillet weld. We're running it pretty cold so we don't melt in that top edge. You can see the toes aren't really tying in. Um, it's just not a very smooth weld. It's hard to control the heat and, and make a nice edge there. Okay, now on the second run, we're gonna try to catch more of that top plate and give it a more rounded over profile. So if we light up, we're gonna use a little more heat. And you can see here that it's, it's catching that top edge, but you can kind of see the peaks as we're going along. It's just not, not a real smooth finish all the way across because we, we can't roll that bead over that top edge trying to weld this as a fillet. So now that we've made two passes on this bad fit up outside corner joint, let's take a closer look at them. So on this first pass, you can see we weren't trying to catch all this top edge. I see a lot of guys try to run this fit up as a fillet weld and not catch all of that top edge. So what you have is a cold weld. It doesn't penetrate very well and it's a pretty weak joint. On the second pass, we really tried to catch all this top edge and you can see that it left a lot of sharp edges and peaks and valleys. It's just not a very attractive edge. Okay, now that we've shown you the two common mistakes running this bad fit up on an outside corner joint, let me show you my technique to get a better weld. Here we are running the bad fit up on this outside corner joint. I'm gonna start out running this uh, kind of incorrectly, keeping this weld off that top edge of the plate, just so you can see a side by side of doing it incorrectly and then how I like to do them. And you're gonna notice I start rolling the torch over the top of the plate, melting in that entire top edge and then bringing it down. And I dip on that bottom side to help make that bead nice and round. So you see this, move up to the top, melt that plate, roll it down, dip. Roll it down, dip. So as I'm rolling that top edge of the plate down, I'm using that as most of my filler and I'm only adding filler here to really control the heat of the puddle and keep it nice and consistent. So if I catch a little too much plate, I'm not adding as much filler. If I don't catch as much plate, I add a little more filler just to keep it nice and consistent as we move along. So here we are after we ran a little bit better weld on this bad outside corner fit up. You can see here we started keeping this bead off that top edge of the plate and I slowly rolled into rolling the top edge of that plate down to make a nice bead, adding filler to, to kind of keep the puddle cool and keep it nice and consistent. You can really see the difference here if you look from the side. We have a really sharp peak, whereas when we started rolling it over, it's a real nice edge. Hardly even looks like there was a bad fit up. So generally, if I do have this fit up, I'll use the torch to roll over the top and it makes a really nice clean weld. Now we're back with our second bad fit up that I normally see. So what we have here is some 090 plate with a large gap. Now normally on 090, I'll set the machine to 100 amps and I'll use 1 16th filler with a good fit up. So I'm gonna start by doing that. We'll see how it goes. Then we'll show you how to run a better weld later. So here we go, making a run on this uh, large gap 090 butt weld. So we're using 1 16th filler. I know my filler is a little too small for this gap. So I start off with pretty low amps, little lazy start in the puddle. And it was, as we get some heat build up, we start running. You can see here, I'm having to really jam a lot of this 1 16th into the weld to keep it together. Even then, the, the filler rod's kind of falling through the puddle every now and then as I'm jamming in probably a quarter inch or more each dab. So this is a, a really labor-intensive weld. I'm having to really fight to keep enough filler rod in there to keep the, the joint together. So here we go, another run, same gap, same settings on the machine. 
The only thing I'm using now is a 330 seconds filler rod instead of 116. So you can see it's a lot easier already to control the puddle. We're getting a nicer bead. We can actually use more amperage now that we have a bigger filler rod because we can control the heat with that, that bigger filler now. Uh, just a lot easier to run. I'm not having to jam a quarter or a half inch of filler in every dip just to try to keep the plate together. This is a much easier run. It looks better. It's not as grainy. This is a, this is a lot easier process now. Okay, so now that we've made a couple runs with our first with our 1 16th filler and secondly with our 3 30 seconds, let's take a look at each weld and see what the difference was. So with our 1 16th, you can see the puddle looks real hot. It was hard to control. I had to jam a lot of filler rod in there to keep it together. It was just a really labor intensive process. Here with the 3 30 seconds, you can see we get a much nicer bead. It's shinier. It's not as grainy looking. I was just barely having to dip the rod in and I could use the full pedal. So I was using 100 amps on this, whereas with the 1 16th, I was maybe only, in, only able to use 75, 80 amps and I had to fight to keep that together. So this is a much easier run. It looks better. It's going to be a stronger joint. Okay, now let's look at the backside of these runs and see the difference between the two. So first we have our, our run with 1 16th filler. You can see we were fighting it so much. We didn't really, we got some penetration, but it didn't really tie into both sides of the plate very well. We didn't really have enough material to put into the weld to get it to properly tie in. Switching over to the 330 seconds run, you can see a very big difference. We could run more current, so we had better penetration. We had more material to put into the weld so we could make a bigger weld and it tied in both sides of the plate really nice the whole weld through. So if you have a big gap in a butt weld, Sometimes stepping up and fill a rod from your normal size will really help you make a better weld. Now that we've gone over some common fit up issues, hopefully you'll be able to use this information to help correct your welds. I'm Jesse McCollum with Everlast Welders. Follow me on Instagram at McCollum.WeldFab. Remember, weld mean, weld green.